Hi guys, Jay here. I've got some recommendations for, and modifications for how we might adapt our CrossFit linchpin workouts for kids. We're going to have a look at uh, JT this week. We've got 21, 15, 9 handstand push-ups, ring dips and push-ups. Um, as we know with this workout, there's a lot of interference from one movement to the next. And one of the risks that we might pose our children if we um, were to give them a workout like this would be possibly rhabdo. Um, there's a lot of eccentric loading on the way down from the handstand push-up, on the way down from the ring dip, and then again on the way down from the push-up. So this number of reps and this much interference we'd look to avoid with our children. So in that case, for our advanced kids, we're going to try and uh, ratchet it up a little for our kids uh, this week. And this is only if they have some prerequisite skills. So... For our advanced kids, we've got 10 rounds of one handstand push-up, 10 seconds in a ring support, and five sit-ups. So for our handstand push-ups, we need to make sure that your children can hold a freestanding headstand. They're aware of the position of the tripod between their head and their hands. They can kick up into a handstand against a wall, and they're able to respond to your cues readily during a workout. For our ring support, they need some prerequisite strength. They also need some prerequisite awareness when holding and maintaining that position on the ring support. Our final movement in the workout will be sit-ups, five sit-ups to finish that workout out. So to recap, 10 rounds of one handstand push-up, 10 second ring support, and five sit-ups. One thing I want to mention about the handstand push-up is they do need to be able to control the descent down so they're not just hitting their head hard on the floor. They need to be able to control that descent. And they also need to be able to maintain a really strong uh, midline so they're not overextending as they're pressing out in that handstand push-up. We're gonna have a video showing you what that should look like uh, for our children when performing that movement and each of those movements. For our less experienced kids, we've got five to seven rounds. Now, we've broken this up so there's more um, natural rest periods for our children. And again, remember we've said before that we want static before dynamic with lots of our gymnastic movements. So they have a 10 to 30 second uh, handstand hold. And then that'll be followed by five sit-ups and then five push-ups of, of different variations. And we'll go through those variations for you depending on where your child is at. And then our no equipment option, really we've, we're looking at, depending on where our kids are, we've got 10 rounds of a one handstand push up if they're capable we've got a 10 to 20 second plank so that nice solid um hollow plank position and then again five sit-ups so very similar to our advanced kids if they are able but you don't have the equipment i.e you don't have the rings you could place two uh, boxes with a gap in between and have your children hold a support on a box if you have that equipment available and our second option for our no equipment is going to be the same as our less experienced uh, kids. We've got a 10 to 30 second handstand hold, five seconds, five sit-ups, sorry, and five push-ups. Okay, Joan is going to take us through the handstand push-up. He's going to kick up against the wall. As he's coming down, he's aiming for his forehead to be in line with his fingertips. His elbows come back to allow that to happen. He presses out, finishing overhead, bringing his head back towards, so his ears are in line with his arms. Okay, Joan is gonna help take us through a ring support. For the ring support, I would suggest that you spot your child just to make sure that the, ra the rings don't splay out as they jump up. And it will also help them if they get a slight swing, just help steady them. So Joan is going to jump up. As he jumps up, he's gonna press down into the rings and we're gonna make sure that he's got an active shoulder. What that looks like is he's pushing his shoulders down and then you'll see his neck lengthen away from his shoulders. There was a gap between his shoulders and his neck. And he's gonna slightly externally rotate. So he's gonna turn his thumbs out and maintain a nice straight body position as he jumps up, okay? And he's gonna hold, keeping the rings really close to his body. And then he's going to come down for me. 
good job. For each of our workout options today, there's a sit-up involved. Now, for this sit-up, it's going to be a butterfly sit-up. So Jonah's gonna place his, the soles of his feet together in front here. He's going to start in a sitting position. This is where he starts. He's going to lie all the way back, keeping his hips on the floor. So his shoulders touch the floor, his hands are going to touch the floor behind him. This is where he goes. And he's gonna sit all the way back up, making sure his shoulder passes through his hip. And then he's gonna to touch the floor in front. He's gonna show us two in a row. One. And two. This can be done with or without an ab mat. Okay, Jonah here is going to take us through a handstand hold. When Jonah is doing the handstand hold, there's a few things we're looking for him to do. We're looking for him to press into the ground really long, so he's driving his arms into the ground. We're also looking for him to keep his uh, middle, his torso, nice and straight, so he's not overarching in the back. Okay, we're also looking for a straight line right from his ankle all the way through to the, uh, the palms of his hands as they're on the ground. So Jonah's going to kick up for us. He's pressing into the ground. He's pointing his toes. And you can see we've got a nice line all the way up on the handstand. During the workout, you're gonna hold that handstand for 10 to 30 seconds. Okay, Jonah's going to take us through one variation that we can use for our handstand hold. Now, if your children cannot kick up into a handstand against the wall just yet, using a wall walk to get them into a position where they can hold themselves is a really great thing to do. So Jonah's gonna lie as if he's at the bottom of a push-up, his hands are underneath his shoulders, his feet are against the wall. He's gonna come up to the plank, top of a plank position. He's then going to step one leg up as high as he can on the wall. He's gonna step his other leg up to match that leg and then he's going to look through the wall, putting his head between his arms, keeping his ears in line with his arms. And he's gonna press up into the ground, holding a really solid position. To make it more difficult, he could walk his hands in, taking his feet higher, and hold there, Jonah, hands through, brilliant. Or to make it even easier, he could have held it in a further position further down. Come down for me, Jonah, good job. Jonah here is going to take us through a plank position. He's going to start lying on his belly. He's going to have his hands underneath his shoulders and he's going to press himself up to his top position. So straight arms. He's going to push through his back to make himself into a nice hollow position. He's going to stay nice and tight, making sure his hands are underneath his shoulders, his feet are together and he's nice and tight here, keeping that nice hollow body position. For our workout, your child's gonna hold that for 10 to 20 seconds each round. And relax. Okay, Jonah's going to show us the worm up push up. He's gonna have his start with his hands underneath his shoulders, his feet together. He's gonna worm his way up to the top of a plank position. There's an ever slight overextension in his spine because he, some children might not have the prerequisite strength to hold that rigid body on the way up. On the way down, he's gonna send his elbows back, keeping his body as straight as possible. One more for me, Jonah. And elbows back, good job. Okay, Jonah's going to take us through a box elevated push-up. He's gonna turn and face the box. He's gonna place his hands on the edge of the box. He's gonna walk his feet back, keeping his body straight. He's gonna lower his body, keeping his elbows back. Once his chest touches the box, he's gonna press up. So we start in the extended position as if we're in a plank. We lower our chest to the box. This is where we go and we press ourselves back out. And this is where we finish for our elevated box push-up. With a box push-up, we only want to be seeing a rigid line in the body here. We don't want to see any worming like we do for the worm push-up. Okay, Jonah's going to take us through a regular push-up. He's gonna lie down on his front. He's gonna get his feet together his hands 
are going to be beneath his shoulders. Keeping his body tight in a straight line right from his shoulder all the way down to his ankle. He's going to press up into the top of a plank position. To come down, he's going to send his elbows back. Chest on the floor. And then he's going to repeat that again for me two more times. And rest. Just to round things off, guys. Um, remember, these are just guidelines. When you're modifying your workouts for your children, feel free to mix and match some of the options I've put here. Um, feel free to tweak the number of rounds, the number of reps, and even the movements in their entirety if it works best for your kids. The sort of bottom line is that they're moving safely and moving and having fun. And, and they're doing it consistently. Um, so on that really, just something uh, that we found that when we're consistent with our working out, it makes our children more consistent with theirs. So make sure that training your children is important, but also getting yourselves in the gym and training yourselves consistently well will have a knock-on effect in training your children and getting them coming to the gym consistently as well. Have fun, guys.